Welcome to Audio Branding, the hidden gem of marketing. Sound plays a more important role in human behavior and our decision-making than you may realize. In this podcast, I'll help you understand the art and science of sound so you can better influence others in business and your life. I'm your host, Jody Krangle. Let's delve a little deeper. Hey, Simon, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm really looking forward to this conversation. So thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get started with a story because I always love stories here. And I wanted to ask you if there's a story you have about an early memory of how sound moved you. Uh, yeah, I, I think I, ha I have a lot, but, um, but there's, there's actually one thing I, I, I came to think about. Um, I was a big fan of, uh, of comic books as a child, and I was also drawing all the time myself and just reading comics. So that was a big passion for me. And then uh, at some point, I, um, together with some friends, we started um, recording these comic books so we kind of played out the characters and okay. um, you know with different voices depending on who you were who you were and uh, and we also did some some foley and some sound design you know when a, a gun was being shot or a glass is broken or something like that um, oh wow okay and what was quite amazing when I think about it is that we only had like a um, an old tape recorder, like a just a stereo tape recorder. So we couldn't do any overdubs or multi uh, track recording. It was just like press record and then make it all work. Uh, so really, really old school. Um, but that's I think that's really when I discovered uh, the, the possibilities um, when it comes to actually recording audio and uh, creating this illusion, I think. Um, that's fantastic. So how old were you? I'm curious. Uh, and do you have any of those tapes around now? <laughs> I, I wish I, I wish I have, but I'm absolutely sure they've been lost. Uh, at some <laughs> or point. you burned them yourself? <laughs> no, no, definitely not. I, uh, but, you know, I, I had like a gazillion um, tapes, you know, because we also mm -hmm. recorded uh, you know, from the, from the radio playing uh, when there was a good song or something like that, we just recorded. So I just collected so many of these uh, kind of mixed tapes. Um, I remember doing that myself. Yeah, yeah. we've all been <laughs> yeah. there. With the boom box. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, but um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I don't have the, the actual tapes, unfortunately, uh, but it's also many years ago. I've, I've probably been around nine or 10 or something. Um, okay. Mm. Yeah. So is that what got you working in sound now? Like, where was the progression? <laughs> did you, were you, did you do music? Did you do like other things before you got into what you're doing now? Uh, it definitely started with the with music. Um, so just playing in bands in high school and just discovering the joy of. Uh, collaborating and creating something together with a group of um, people that was uh, I think that that was really what what triggered me into it it was the the, the social aspect of music I um, I was uh, raised in the countryside so I was used to I guess spending a lot of time on my own uh, entertaining myself um, and that's that really inspired me to to also try to to join a group of people and and uh, be part of a bigger crowd and be part of a band and all that. So yeah, just playing playing music um, really was was a big passion in my in my youth, and what automatically led me to where I am now. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So can you tell me a little bit about Unmute and what you're doing right now? Because uh, like that's <laughs> that's a pretty big transition, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> from uh, from recording cartoons. Uh, yeah. <laughs> as a child. Yeah. Uh, that's um, that's a big question for me to answer, I think. Um, we all take roundabout routes. I yeah, know yeah, it's, always, it's uh, yeah, <laughs> long and winding road. <laughs> it always is. There is really no uh, no straight straight line there. But mm -hmm. I think the the passion for 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 creating music, um, you know, writing songs, and then going into music production because I discovered that it was much more fun to have uh, full control of everything um, and being able to actually create what I have uh, had envisioned in my mind. And also, I was not uh, a good singer, for instance. I, I uh, <clears throat> still, uh, still ain't a good singer. So being able to, you know, work with great musicians, great singers, and st still create something uh, that I, um, that I felt was mine, that, that, that really led me to to um, producing uh, music, and from there, it I kind of got involved in advertising. What first drew you to advertising? Because that's a bit of a leap, right? From doing your own music to was it just because you needed a roof over your head? Mm -hmm. I mean, because <laughs> uh, that's often what I hear. <laughs> yeah, it was actually you know as a struggling musician trying to make it and all that uh i played mm -hmm. in in some really great bands but it was just tough uh for everybody to 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 make it and um we kind of were asked about you know placing some of our songs in in uh, advertising because as the record sales declined Everybody in the music business looks for new opportunities to make money and 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 being able to sync your music to either ads or film or TV and so on is is definitely um, interesting. So we started looking uh, in that direction, and I was probably at that time also not I was a bit tired of playing live and you know touring and. Uh, carrying around heavy amps. Uh, yeah, and that's a lot of work. <laughs> that's a lot of work. And I also got um, got a child at that point. So being more at home, uh, nine to five, all that was also um, needed. And I just think that the, the, the advertising and the, and the brand world was just super interesting because it's still creative um, and you could actually uh, pay your bills at the same time. So that was just an, I don't know, it just happened kind of automatically. And, and after working as a composer and sound designer for that, um, that area for, for, for some time, I then was introduced to to sonic branding um as now when did that happen what's the the timeline here <laughs> uh that's probably uh <laughs> like in my late 20s i think um okay. so now i'm in my my mid 40s so uh okay so you've known about sonic branding and and audio branding for like 20 plus years then yeah yeah in in some shape or form i think it's um it's kind of a bit blurry with these terms but but mm -hmm. but the whole idea of creating sound and music that's specific for a brand or a campaign or something like that that's i think that's everything i've done has kind of evolved around that concept um and to get back to your question about Unmute, I mm -hmm. uh, met my um, business partner, Daniel, uh, when we both worked as freelancers for, for other companies. And we joined a, a big uh, Swedish production company uh, at some point and ended up uh, running that uh, the Danish department here from Copenhagen. 
and that learned or that motivated us to start our own business. I think uh, we saw that there was a big potential for an agency who could help companies navigate in this space. Uh, and we didn't see that there were so many else, so many other companies doing it. So there was, it was there was an, an kind of an open playing field for us. And we had enough experience to to uh, go out and do it on our own. I think uh, we've definitely also seen how not to run a business. So that was. <laughs> Everything you learn is all worth it, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's all stepping stones. <laughs> totally. Everything's a, a life lesson. Um, yeah. And I think it's also just about, you know, are you, have, have you teamed up with the right people and are you ready to take a chance and just go for it? I mean, what, what's the worst thing that could happen? Uh, that, that's the mindset you need to have at least. Um, yeah. So we just went for it, I think. Um, so that was now almost six years ago. Okay. We, we, we started the company, just him and I. Um, mm -hmm. So just two guys and two computers. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, that, that's, that's never happened before. <laughs> no, that's, we've never heard that story before. Yeah. Um, uh, well, it's a good place to start, and definitely, it sounds like you're doing. It sounds like I didn't mean to do that, but pun intended, pun intended I yeah. guess. <laughs> it sounds like you're doing well. <laughs> well, um, we are. We are still here, and uh, yeah. we are still enjoying it, and we are still hungry. I think for for more. Uh, we definitely see a, just a growing. Uh, potential for our services and the, the, the growing demand. I think it's uh, we find that balance of uh, of experience um, and and still ambitious, and still being ambitious. Um, and we we are actually every day met with uh, new challenges and uh, new requests from clients and uh, new types of clients and projects so i'm just amazed about and that's also why i think uh, I, I love your podcast so much because you all just it's so very varied you know there's so many different doors to open uh, when it comes to to creating uh, sound and music here and and we're definitely um, experienced that uh, experiencing that ourselves so the, the the variety of projects is, is is really amazing, I think. So that that's yeah, what keeps yeah. us uh, going and inspired. Yeah, definitely. It's it's a. I mean, the part of what I love about this podcast and and voiceover actually mm. is that my day is different every day. Yeah. <laughs> so every time I do a, a podcast, there's some different aspect of sound that I learn more about, and I love it. It's it's a passion, which, you know, of course, it's a passion with you, too, or you wouldn't be here. So, <laughs> Yeah, and I think, I think it, you, you need to have that passion for it because you definitely shouldn't do it just for the money uh, or something like that. <laughs> you know, it's uh, yeah. <laughs> if, we, uh, if we count the hours uh, and the, the payment, then it's definitely it doesn't add up in the long run uh, so so yeah, so it's yes. something else that drives you uh, it's um i think for us both me and and, and for daniel it, i think it's it's that uh, curiosity you know where can mm -hmm. we take this where can we take uh, our creativity you know uh, trying always to invent new uh, concepts or new approaches to this and and surprise our clients with something that they didn't expect so i'd say often they they don't they don't know about the the options or the possibilities with this so so that we can keep showing them new ways um that's that's really that's really interesting and i think that's what you can do with sound and music yeah, yeah. There's so much that can be accomplished with it, which I, I really love. I wanted to ask you about sonic branding as a design discipline, because I know that you think about this in mm. a very, um, 
I, I'm not going to say clinical, but like uh, it, it, there is a process. There is a, a, a way of doing it that you've developed over time. And yeah. every sound agency has a different way of doing that. Yeah. But, uh, but how do you think of it as a design discipline? Yeah, good question. I think we, we've all experienced how, um, how sound is kind of a, often is a last minute decision in, in many creative projects or creative processes. Uh, oh, yeah. you know, that's the whole reason for this podcast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you hit it right there. Exactly. <laughs> and yeah. I think that was, that was actually also the whole reason why we formed uh, Unmute because we thought, okay, yeah. <laughs> we need to be the adults here and help brands understand the, 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 the importance of this and, uh, mm -hmm. the, the impact it has. And in order to achieve that, you need to move away from just thinking about your outputs. So what what are you actually you know putting on your your TikTok? Um, but think more in a uh, in both a holistic way, and think about how can we actually design um, design a solution for a brand that that works um, across uh, across all touch points, and also remaining the 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 recognizable uh, features, the recognizable assets. And the last point, how can we make sure that it's all um, conveying the right things for the brand, that it actually is a reflection of the brand, uh, the brand's identity and the brand's values and all that. So it's kind of that the three things to take into account here. And that's, when we looked at that, we saw, okay, this is design because that is what design is all about. Design is about finding the, the, the problem, uh, the, the struggle or the something that is not right. And then you design a solution. And for, for us, for, for what we saw was that the problem was that there was no structure in this. Um, so the brands could not, even though they, understand the, 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 what we're trying to achieve, but, but how to actually um, go about it and how actually to um, convert such an, such an idea to, to real sounds. And we wanted to, to go away from that um, very, um, you can say, uh, when, when, it, when things become too subjective and it's just about, you know, uh, whatever artistic or creative idea some composer might come up with, uh, you know, he, maybe he, he's doing um, 500 sketches and we hope we cross our fingers that maybe one of them is good. And then we say, oh, that one is good. We take that uh, and we go with that. that. That's not a structured approach. That's just um, something, that's just a random thing, you know, and design is about structure. Um, so we looked at the, at, at visual design principles and really tried to, to just match that up with, uh, with, with sonic design or with sound design, how, you know, uh, in visual design, you have your, uh, we have a, a logo, a visual logo. Um, you might have your uh, colors, the brand color palette, you have a, uh, your typography, your custom font, you have your graphic icons, you have maybe a motion uh, language, how does things move? All these different elements combined uh, create a form, a, a visual identity. So we take that and we basically translate that into to sound. Um, are there direct translations for those, or or did you kind of have to build your own? <laughs> <laughs> no, there there are some 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 translations. We we for instance, um, when it comes to music, music is very much you know music is something that happens over a long period of time. You might have uh, two minutes or so, so you can actually establish some kind of emotional. Um, connection with your listener so it happens over time and it's it's filled with emotional value 
And that's actually compared, comparable with uh, visual images. So your, your photography. So many, many brands, they also have like an, an, a, a, a photography or image guide or image principles, you know, what are, what, what kind of images are we using? You know, um, there can be some, some principles around that. So that, that's for instance, is quite comparable with, with, uh, with music. And you can also look at, at, uh, shapes and colors. You know, you can have, uh, round shapes. You can have sharp shapes that's hard to say um so roundness for instance that's also something you can translate into sound how is the round sound how is the sharp sound uh, all these things so when you first start really uh taking a deep dive into this uh, it's it's um it's really interesting how we can actually take a visual shape or a visual form uh or visual um, expression and turn that into a sound where you intuitively uh, hear the connection. That's um, that's where the magic happens to us. Uh, that that these things just that you kind of connect the the, the eyes and the ears basically. Um, mm -hmm. But of course, you, you need you need some visual cues for that. Uh, not all brands have that. Um, maybe it's, yeah, maybe the sound just needs to stand on its own. So then it's more about what is it actually, what is it actually expressing? Um, and that's, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's also part of it. So tying in the emotional into the, the sound, does that, um, does that have to do with the audio user experience that you talk about? Um, yes, it has, but, but actually use the user experience is when you put another layer to everything and that's the, the, it's a layer of, or the, an element of a uh, function. Uh, okay. So the product has a sound. Yeah. Or the, whatever sound you're creating also needs to, uh, express a meaning or a purpose, uh, or a functionality. Okay. So you actually try to um, to nudge the listener into doing something. You know, is is it uh, is it like saying it that is it is it giving the feedback that something went wrong, something went mm -hmm. right? You get the the confirmation, you get the notification, all these extra um, extra things that we can put into to sound design. So it's not just about the experience and not just about um, the, the emotions and the feelings and so on, but it's also more um, informational. Informational, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. And again, we are, try to combine these things so that that the the sounds is both pleasant and part of the brand experience, but it's all mm -hmm. also ex telling us something about function. Um, we all know the the our annoying dishwasher uh, playing some Mozart tune um, with just a, a really crappy sound. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, why? Why are you wasting my time? <laughs> yeah, or at least, you know, I, I've spent so much money on this uh, machine. And then it's like, so why didn't you just put a little bit more effort into creating a, a sound that was not super annoying? Um, yeah. So it's basically a music box. <laughs> it is a music box. We need something a little more than that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh it doesn't have to be so uh crappy. It's uh mm -hmm. and and we act, we actually work with with uh, with companies now that are, are are aware of that, aware of the 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 value of of uh, quality sound design and what positive in, impact it can have on the the user experience as well as as well as the brand experience you know that it's and i think uh, apple has done a lot of good stuff uh, in that uh, regard because they really created some uh some sounds that just are super pleasant and and um 
reflects the, the 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 design the overall design of Apple. So the sounds are also really well designed. And I think many companies, because when it comes to design, a lot of people uh, look at Apple, of course, and they they see mm -hmm. okay, it it actually uh, creates some some extra value. Um, so so we are we are seeing a, a, a shift. I think that that also when it, I mean when it comes to product product design that uh, we just worked with um, a company who created um, a new smart oven. So okay, basically, a, okay. an oven that is uh, that has a built-in iPhone. Um, so you get the little display where you can do everything. You know, you can cook uh, something. I, I didn't even thought it was possible to to do that. Um, so, but I'm not that <laughs> nerdy when it comes to to cooking, I guess. <laughs> but anyway, they they wanted like really bespoke sound design that, and they were super um, aware of of the branding aspect of it. So, it, even though they were engineers and uh, you know really focused on the functionality and you know this sound should really express that now you're your uh, chicken in the oven is done. Uh, mm -hmm. You have to hurry to get it out and all that. But it, they still have so much focus on, on that. that it should also be a branded experience. Um, Do you have an, an example maybe that you could let us play here just so people can hear what you're talking about? <laughs> yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, I have a couple of examples. There's one um, project that we are that really is uh, <clears throat> close to our hearts here. Um, we uh, mm -hmm. work with the I think the the leading um, electric vehicle charging company here in in uh, in, in the Nordic um, called Clever. Mm -hmm. A really uh, visionary and yeah innovative company, and they've been. Uh, I think front runners in this whole electric vehicle uh, revolution that we are uh, in the middle of right now, um, and they are very much aware of the of the brand experience on all uh, all levels and for all senses. So they also, of course, wanted to to create their own sonic uh, identity, and it's not just focused on the on the com on the on the marketing and the communication, uh, but definitely also uh, a lot of focus on their product. And their product is uh, centered around uh, the, uh, the app, your mobile phone app application. Uh, okay. And then mm -hmm. also the, the the actual charger. So you might even have a charger uh, installed at home, but there are also these ch charging stations. Uh, as I'm sure you also know, they are all over the place now. Mm -hmm. And just making sure that Every time you you interact with uh, the with clever as they're called, you feel at home and you feel this familiarity and uh, this sense of uh, you know you build that sense of trust because it's uh, it's recognizable and it's most importantly it's um, it fits their brand so it's on brand it doesn't feel like it's a detached thing. But what they see and what they hear is 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 really connected. Mm -hmm. So I think we could hear the, the the sonic logo we created for Clever. It's a little just a three note melody. Uh, that's kind of the the melodic hook that that they have. Then the 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 sound is actually quite layered with much more information than just the 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 melodic hook. Um, they are very much clever. It's very much about the, the about sustainability and how how they can uh, help everybody uh, move in that direction. So we worked a lot with uh, organic elements. Um, so basically, nature nature sounds uh, mm -hmm. integrated in the in the mu musical arrangement. So when you hear it, you can also hear some kind of uh, nature element to the sound um, combined with this uh, melodic hook. So yeah, we, we could start by, by just hearing the, the, the sonic logo, I think. Well, that's the end of this episode. 
Thanks for listening. And if you like what you heard, why not tell a friend about this podcast? It's available in all the usual locations. Until next time.